So I've been talking about the down channel trend all through 22 and uh, this year we broke it and um, so now we're coming down to test it to support. If it can hold that's going to be good. If it uh, breaks down that's not going to be so good. So we're going to take a look at uh, you know whether the S&P can hold this level or not. Uh, so stick with me. My name is Brian Cannon and welcome to Markets in 5. <music> dive in. This is the S&P 500 and uh, obviously we've been talking about this down channel trend line uh, and its subsequent break uh, as of this year. And uh, so, you know, I've, I've kind of mentioned the last couple of episodes that, you know, once this, uh, once this strong down channel resistance trend gets broken to the upside, eventually it would happen and uh, certainly it's happened this year. Uh, but I also mentioned that because of the strength of the resistance, more than likely it's going to come back down and either serve as support or it's going to serve as, as a false breakout. And uh, so I think in the next several trading days to maybe a week at the most, uh, some news, some information will come out that will either validate this breakout and send it higher or uh, cause this thing to be a fake break. And uh, so, you know, we're gonna be ready. We're not putting a whole lot of risk on at this point until we get the, uh, the positive read. There'll be plenty of upside to be made if uh, this thing uh, breaks out to the upside for sure and can hold. Um, doesn't mean it's not gonna be, come without some, some swings and some rockiness along the way, but uh, you know, that would be a very positive move for the short term. Uh, and again, if it breaks down, that would be very, very bad. So if we look at history as any sort of guide, you know, this is this is what I want to be careful of. Uh, you know, so this is the the tech bubble drawdown from 2000 to 2003, where the market gave back 50 percent. Uh, and, and it had this very strong down channel trend line with lots of kind of moves that looks very, very similar to this this uh, pull down that, that we've experienced last year. And then they had a breakout right here, it kind of clearly broke above this down channel trend line and uh, looked like it was going to be off to the races. And then it uh, kind of reversed itself, came down, double tested, uh, you know, double bottomed here. And, uh, and that correlated with the down channel trend line, bounced around it for a little while and couldn't hold it and then the bottom falls out and and you lose another you know 30 percent so that's what we want to be very very careful of and make sure that this breakout that we're having now is sustainable and that it, it is for real and it's not uh, going to come back and just uh, you know the bottom's going to fall out so let's take a minute and look at the s p and look at some of the, the signs to to determine uh what what are the trends what are some of the indicators we're looking at uh what are they saying I would say um, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, so you've got RSI that has uh, has broken down below 50. And again, anytime the RSI spends any real time down below the 50 mark, it's usually not good for the market. So again, can it reverse itself and pop back up? It certainly could, but it also is kind of break, breaking trend a little bit here. So uh, we kind of the last several peaks that have occurred in the in the RSI, uh, usually led to, to pretty good drops. So, you know, we just want to be careful of that. And this, the RSI reading is telling me that we're probably going to have a little bit of a, a drop here and that it may not, may not resolve itself uh, in, in an uptrend. However, when I come and look at the, the trend itself, there is a, uh, you know, an up channel trend that is starting to form. So it very well could resolve itself on this this down channel channel trend line and correlate with this uptrend, this kind of medium term uptrend uh, channel uh, support here. And, uh, you know, I could definitely see this. I could see a case of it holding here and kind of breaking up and holding this up channel trend. And 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 again, the RSI would reverse and head back up. So, you know, you can't take one indicator and, and call it call it the, uh, you know, the end all be all. It's kind of a collection of everything. Now, if we look at the MACD down here, the last, again, several times the MACD rolled over, we had the, the MACD uh, death cross, if you will. So it basically it's kind of reversing uh, from, from trending up to now trending down. And so we have had that death cross. Now, we have not gotten below the zero mark on the MACD, where, where that's usually when you, when you, go, when you drop below uh, zero on the MACD, it's usually, again, not good for the market. Uh, so we have not dropped below that yet. So again, there's, there's kind of a mixed bag of, of uh, indicators out there that are kind of saying that 
um, the next couple trading days to, to the next week of, you know, it's going to be very, very important to watch these levels and really determine whether we want to, uh, to add risk or, or possibly remove it. So as you can see, the market is at a point where it's uh, either going to make sense to begin to uh, add some risk to the equation or potentially to uh, remove it. And, uh, you know, I guess we'll find, find out in the next uh, week or so of trading. Uh, but certainly if you have any questions, give me a shout and I'll see you on the next Markets in 5.